Learning how to enter into a state of flow where you're 100% focused on the task at hand is one of the best things you can do in terms of productivity. So over the last few months, I've been trying to decrease my work hours from about 12 to 13 hours a day and bring them down to just eight hours a day, but still getting the same amount of work done. And I've largely been successful in achieving that because I now work in four hour deep work chunks, meaning for those four hours, I'm super focused, no distractions, and time just flies by because I'm in a state of flow for the whole time. But the first component to being able to achieve this is to plan your deep work sessions well ahead of time. So the night before, I'll plan out my day using the MIT strategy. And MIT here stands for most important task. So I'll list out my one or two most important tasks for the next day, the tasks that if I complete them, will move the needle more than any other task. For example, this might be preparing the content for one of these YouTube videos, and that task might usually take about three to four hours, and so I'll prioritize that task, and as soon as I wake up in the morning, I usually go straight to either the office or a coffee shop and get that task done. I'm by far my most productive in the early morning, which leads us on to my second point, the golden hour. Now, this is something that I've been thinking about quite a lot recently. The difference between what could be called an average performing person and a high performance person, what makes an average person average, and what makes a high performance person high performance. So I've realized that the first one hour of the day, what I'm going to call the golden hour is kind of what determines how your day will turn out. So whether you have a productive day or an unproductive day, it's influenced heavily on what you do in the first hour of the day. So let me explain. When my alarm clock goes off in the morning, but I keep hitting the snooze button, I finally wake up and I spend 30 minutes scrolling through social media. I then slowly go and shower and have my breakfast. I watch Netflix for a bit. Then two hours after waking up, I finally leave the house. It's very likely that that slow energy and momentum will carry on throughout the day, right? On the other hand, let's say I wake up early, I get straight out of bed, I get ready, and I go straight to my task list to see what tasks I need to complete first. And I have a very productive morning, then of course I'm likely to have a productive day too, right? And it's this golden hour in the morning, the first one hour after waking up, that often determines whether I'm going to have a productive day or not. And I see this a lot with the students that I coach in the Transform Your Grades course. The high performance students live their lives with urgency, right? They have things to do, people to see, goals to achieve. And so their actions match that. It's like when you start work in your graduate job, you'll have, you'll probably have key performance indicators or KPIs to reach. So you probably have a manager keeping an eye on your performance. And for every hour that you work, the company is investing money in you. So naturally they want you to work at a decent speed, right? So if you're working slow and you're not reaching your KPIs and just your general demeanor is slow and lethargic, then it's very likely that your manager will pull you into their office and have a word with you and ask you to speed up. The thing about being a student is that students don't have a manager like you would have in the workplace, right? They don't have a manager to keep track of their performance and to apply that bit of pressure to speed up their performance. So essentially, you have to be your own manager. You have to regularly be monitoring yourself and be asking, was I productive today? Was I working as fast and efficiently as I could have been? Or did I just kind of take it easy and just let the day slip by because I've noticed that this is one of the main differences between an average student and a high performance student. A high performance student doesn't need a manager to be looking over their shoulder when they're studying. They can kind of just manage themselves. They can motivate themselves. And once you learn how to do this, how to manage yourself properly, it's an absolutely indispensable skill to have, not only as a student, but in the working environment too. This is something that I teach in 
teaching a lot more detail in the Transform Your Grades course, not only how to manage yourself in terms of the daily habits and hacks of high performance students, but I also teach how to train yourself to enter into a state of flow. Just like switching on a light bulb, when it's time to study, you study. And I can't emphasize enough how important this skill is. It made my life at university just so much easier and it directly helped me graduate with a 4.0 GPA. So in this course, I go through how I went from essentially failing my exams and graduating high school with a very low grade to completely transforming my grades and graduating in the top 5% of my university. And so the strategies and topics that I cover will directly help boost your exam grades. We've had hundreds of students enroll and graduate and completely transform their own grades and you can too. We're running a massive discount right now. You can find out more by clicking on the link in the description below. Our circadian rhythm is essentially our body clock that regulates our sleep-wake cycle, right? So I'm a big proponent of, when it comes to productivity, not trying to swim against the tide, but instead just kind of going with the flow. So you might notice that you get tired and your energy levels slump at the same time every day but also you feel alert and awake at the same time every day also. So for example, for me in the early morning from 6 a.m. to about 12, I'm at my most productive. So this right here is when I start my first four hour deep work session and at around noon, my energy levels start to dip slightly. So I'll fill this time with shallow tasks that don't take too much concentration. Tasks like replying to emails, replying to YouTube comments, that kind of thing. And then in late afternoon at around 4 p.m., my energy levels will increase again. So I'll start another four hour deep work session. And I think this is important, that if your energy levels drop at the same time every day, you don't try to fight it too much, but instead you utilize the times in the day where your energy levels are high, and in those time periods, you try to be super productive in a state of flow. So Mihai Csikszentmihalyi was a Hungarian-American psychologist who recognized and named the psychological concept of flow state. And he says that the tasks that you're doing in order to efficiently enter into a state of flow are extremely important. He said, we need to face challenges that either match or slightly exceed our current ability. If the tasks we're engaged in are too simple, we get bored. And if we find ourselves in situations that are too far beyond our skill level, we get overwhelmed. One of the reasons video games are so good at sustaining our attention is that they get harder with every level. At work, however, our experiences tend to take the opposite trajectory. So jobs tend to get easier the longer we do them, making flow experiences all the more difficult to achieve. So when you are starting your deep work session, just bear in mind that in order to efficiently enter into a flow state, the task shouldn't be too difficult nor too easy. My favorite places to work are coffee shops. And honestly, in terms of entering into a flow state, for me at least, nothing else really comes close. I have my home office, but I associate my apartment with relaxation. So it's not a great environment to stay in deep focus for long periods of time. My work office too is okay, but there are just so many distractions. In a coffee shop, I can just put my AirPods in and completely zone out. So I primarily do pretty much all of my deep work in coffee shops. Now, this is really important. It's about priorities. If you're aiming to enter into a state of deep work, then you need to prioritize your task at hand higher than everything else going on around you. So all communication outside of your one single task that you're doing can wait until you're done. And this is where a kind of mini social media detox can help. So for me, what I'll often do is I'll put my phone in another room or enable do not disturb mode, and I'll make sure that I don't get tempted by checking email on my browser. And the idea is to really just disconnect from anything else. And I actually went on my first social media detox a while ago. It was only a four day detox, but it was one of the first times in years that I've not touched social media for that long. And it was incredible. It's kind of difficult to articulate, but my mind was just at peace. There was no kind of nagging feeling that I had to check my phone. I didn't have to break my focus whenever I received a new notification. It was just a really relaxing time, I guess. But yeah, becoming unavailable is incredibly important when it comes to deep work. 
So willpower will only get you so far. It will help, but you can't expect to rely on self-discipline all the time because naturally some days you're going to be feeling productive and in the mood to study and the other days you're just not. And that's where establishing rituals can really help. So for me, like I mentioned earlier, I work in chunks throughout the day and that's just a habit for me. And so as soon as I wake up, I shower, I get ready. I usually head to a coffee shop for a four hour deep work session because I do it almost every day. It's just a habit now. I don't even have to think about it. You see, if you start your deep work sessions at the same time every day, it kind of trains your mind and your body that that's just what you do. And it becomes a whole lot easier to get into a zone of working and enter into a state of flow. So long stretches of intense focus should be balanced with good rest. And I don't mean the kind of rest where you're just mindlessly watching YouTube videos or mindlessly scrolling through social media because that's a kind of low value habit that doesn't really add much value to your life. But I mean where you make an effort to opt for quality, engaging experiences like pursuing hobbies, like learning new skills, like reading, that kind of thing. I actually made another video similar to this one called How to Study with Extreme Extreme Focus, where I go through some other things I do to enter into a flow state. You can click on the card on the screen to watch that. Alternatively, I made another video called Train Yourself to Learn Like Einstein Super Intelligence. It's one of my most popular videos right now. It's got about 200,000 views in just the first couple of weeks. Again, you can click on the card on the screen. And right now we're running a 64% sale on the Transform Your Grades course. Link in the description below.